Hello and welcome to another episode of The Savvy Entrepreneur. Today we're here at St. Ferrain FC headquarters and Longmont Indoor Soccer to speak with two of the directors of St. Ferrain FC. I've known these two gentlemen for a number of years because I coach with St. Ferrain FC. So without further ado, we've got Tim and Josh. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Alright. <laughs> Thanks, Talos. I'm Timothy Laxon. I'm currently the director of U9 through U14 boys here at St. Brain FC. And uh, thanks again for having us. We're really excited to be here. Josh Woida, um, the uh, recreational director of coaching here with St. Brain FC. Now, you guys have been coaching and have played soccer for decades, right? So let's talk about your guys' background in the beautiful game. Tim, let's talk about your background. Um, yeah, I grew up in Colorado Springs, actually, and um, in their club system, had the opportunity to play against Longmont Express, which we'll get into in a little bit, St. Brand Express, and um, played high school in Colorado Springs, went on to play a little college, um, Division Two at University of Colorado in Colorado Springs, and um, from there, dabbled in a little, in a couple tryouts down in Mexico. Um, nothing really materialized, so I came back up to the to university to finish out the degree and then got into coaching and have been coaching ever since. I actually started with a Pride Soccer Club down in Colorado Springs, gosh, right around 2004. Wow, you've been doing this for a while now. A little bit, yeah. Josh, what about you? Uh, See, so yeah, I've been in, in the game my whole life, uh, obviously as a player to start, um, played, you know, club, high school, all that when I was, a, you know, a teenager was lucky enough to play college ball, um, played at Central Iowa for four years, got the captain of that squad. Um, all the while though, uh, I had already started coaching. My, my parents were good, big on us volunteering in our community, so 1993 I was a junior in high school and I uh, started volunteering coaching in my, in my local uh, rec program. And when I, during all my playing days from then on, I was always coaching on the side, um, like Tim, you know, Professional soccer didn't work out as a, as a, as a career path, but I, I, I had to be in the game and I started coach, just made coaching a full-time career um, once I got out of college. Um, was lucky enough to coach at the, at the college level for about a decade. Um, I, and I was at Northern Illinois University when this job was posted back in 2011. Tim was already with the club and I, I wanted to uh, move to Colorado with my wife, start a family, and uh, I applied for this, this role. and. Uh, Tim interviewed me back then, was, okay. and uh, and uh, it's been I've been here ever since. Wow, it's so great that both of you guys had the opportunity to give back to the community and to the game. Um, most people don't think of soccer or soccer clubs as a startup, but you guys are a unique story. You, you guys started this from nothing. Tim, you want to tell us about that story? Sure. Uh, the, the organization itself, um, St. Brand Express, actually goes back to 1981 when they started uh, when they got it off the ground and they were able to provide both recreational and competitive soccer at that time. Um, like I mentioned, I was able to play against them from some teams in Colorado Springs when the clubs were, were named something different at that time. Um, they got into a little bit of financial difficulty in the two, early 2000s, and that's when we were able to come in and rebrand and reboot as St. Brain FC in 2008. So I joined the club um, in the fall of 2008 just after we had gone through that transition. Oh. Um, at that time, we were able to create one competitive team because the recreational base had stayed in place with St. Brand Express, and that's all that was there. So after we started the one team in 2008, we were able to continue to build a competitive program, hire more staff members. We were able to bring Josh in to, to continue running the, the recreational program and then build the competitive side to roughly 40 teams, wow. which has been a, a, a great experience for us to be a part of, to see the growth, and to see the involvement that we've had in the community over the years. Well, 40 teams, that must require a lot of operational infrastructure. How do you guys handle that many kids? Uh, you know what, I, I think we, I think a lot of it has to do with the tremendous staff that we have in place currently. You know, we we're very organized from the ground up, so from the recreational soccer up through competitive, there's a lot of synergy. Um, the transition is, is pretty seamless. And at the same time, 
um, because we are able to provide so much to the community, we have a lot of support coming back. So the volunteer base in the rec soccer program is, is massive. You know, there are a lot of families that want to get involved, a lot of parents that want to help coach their children. Um, and as they continue getting older, we transition a lot of those um, parents into coaches and they continue helping us in the competitive side and, and beyond. You know, we have some coaches that we were just talking to today that have been coaching with us since 2007, starting as volunteers and now they're actually lead coaches in some of our competitive age groups. Yeah, and to piggyback on the infrastructure bit, um, you know, we, when I was hired, I was the fourth full-time employee. You know, Tim, I believe, was the third full-time employee. Uh, and now we're up to seven full-time employees. So we've pretty much doubled our full-time staff, which allows us to do a lot of things. Most of us have a, a lifetime soccer background, but some people were definitely brought in with some different skills. So Because it's a business we're running, you know, there's a, there's a lot of day-to-day -day there. But I, the big piece, and, and Tim touched on, is the volunteers. We have an army of volunteers. Um, in any given season, we'll have 40 competitive teams. We'll have 140 rec teams. And of those 140 rec teams, we have roughly... 200 volunteer coaches, head and assistant coaches. So it's a massive group of, of, of leaders in the community, of adults that are, are giving their time freely for, most, for the most part to help the kids play. Uh, in any given season, it's 2,000 kids wearing the St. Brain FC uniform, which is, is pretty awesome to be a part of. Um, the, 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 back when I came from in Illinois, I, I, co I was coaching at Northern Illinois University, but I was also working with the local club and that club was 250 kids, so to, wow. the, this is such a larger entity that, and a huger reach we have in our community, which is, is pretty special to be a part of. That's great that you can actually foster and grow that uh, coaching base. You guys are doing a great job for that. Yeah, thank you. For sure. And so let's discuss the difference between a rec and a competitive team. Well, I think uh, you know, rec is typically your, your beginning stages. Um, it's often called, referred to now as grassroots, but I think that's just a fancier name for, the, for recreational soccer. Um, there's usually no travel involved. Um, and it's usually a volunteer who leads it. You know, as Tim mentioned, we have an army of volunteers at St. Fran FC. You know, Pre-COVID, we had roughly 200 volunteer coaches every season, uh, which, which is awesome. Um, so you'll have a, a mom or a dad, usually, uh, or you know, like yourself, Talis, someone in the community who wants to give back to a rec team and, and coach those those squads. And obviously, we provide a lot of resources so they can. They're not just a warm body. They have they have an education. They have they have a professional staff behind them. They can lean on for resources, uh, and that kind of you know, it's 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 a it's a fun environment where they can start to learn the game, um, develop some of the basic skills, and if they really catch fire and love playing in that, in that environment and want to take on a little more, we offer you know, a competitive program, which Tim is one of our, our leads. So what's the difference? Is it just uh, the level of play, or is there a commitment from parents that are different? What's the... Yeah, I think you could look at it a few different ways. You know, to, to piggyback on what Josh was saying, most of the recreational games are going to be local here in Longmont on Saturdays, and they're going to stay local, versus um, the competitive program will have teams that travel throughout the region and the state you know so some of our competitive teams can go as north as far north as wyoming wow who's part of this Colorado soccer association they can go to fort collins they can go as far west as grand junction we've had games down in pueblo um so they'll, they'll move all over the state um, but but again those age groups kind of transition so the recreational the in-house recreational program will stay here and then once we build into the Colorado soccer association and their programs, we have a little bit of blend, right? For example, the team you're coaching is going to stay regionalized, and then at the at the very um, elite level, there are teams that will travel all over the state. St. Ferdinand FC has been doing some great things in terms of championships and some performance metrics. Let's talk about that. Yeah, we've been able to celebrate um, some recent successes on, on both sides, uh, girls and boys. Um, we've had some older girls teams that have made it to the finals of President's Cup. We've had some older boys teams that um, just recently were three-peat champions in the President's wow. Cup. So it's a, it's a great accomplishment um, for both. And we've had some younger age groups on both sides make it to the semifinals of President's Cup. Um, finals of President's Cup. We've had um, other teams that have made it to the semifinals and finals of State Cup. 
we've had quite a few college signings as well, which we're really proud of and, and we're able to celebrate um, both, both girls and boys, um, some players that have been able to stay local and attend uh, schools here in Colorado and other um, players that have been able to go out of state for school and continue to play soccer. So we've been, we've been really happy. I think about just really back, excuse me, back to when I started, we, we weren't even quite fielding high school teams yet, let alone sending kids off on scholarships. And uh, like our O one girls, for example, almost every girl went on to play college soccer, which is just the meteoric rise this program has had is pretty sweet. You guys are literally making people's dreams come true. Like, how many kids grow up thinking that they want to go play college soccer, and you guys are doing it? So, that's off. It's easy to get behind, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. You guys touch a lot of uh, lives with your program, so hats off to you guys for doing a, a great thing for our community. Um, Thank you. So, what, what can, as a community, what can we offer you guys? You, what are you guys looking for? Coaches, refs? Uh, what? What can the community do to offer support to St. Fran FC? I mean, I think we're always looking for, you know, talented individuals who want to give back to their community. Um, going back to our, our volunteer army, uh, people from all walks of life uh, and, and talented in their own right who just want to help provide an awesome experience for kids, especially now get when kids need to be doing this more than ever. So yeah, we're always looking for people who want to help out in the community. And we, every season we have people who have no kids playing but just want to be a part of that uh, and be able to be a you know, soccer superhero for a group of, of young kids. Um, and we have, you, can, you can register for any of our programs pretty much year round. In fact, our spring registration it is open already, um, which will be our next big rec program. If you're ever interested in getting into our competitive program, that can happen at any point. You just you contact us and we can get you out to train with the team. Um, so if you, you want to play, you want to help, you want to coach, um, whatever it is, we, we provide all the resources to make that happen. Yeah, and I can speak from personal experience. You guys have offered great resources to me as a coach and I've had uh, the best coaching experience I've had in my career with St. Fran FC. So kudos to you guys on that. Um, yeah. right on. I, I think I would add to, you know, to your question, are we looking for referees? Yes. You know, whether you played soccer in the past, whether you played a different sport in the past, you know, whatever level of experience you have, we can always use the referees. Um, we can't do what we do without our volunteer base, which is massive. And so they provide such a, a huge support network for everything that we do moving forward. And I think we're really excited that we're able to be so involved in the community and the relationships that we build actually lead to opportunities like this, where we can collaborate with you, where we can in, you know, interact with um, you on a, on a coaching level, but also on a professional level as well. And so the more relationships we build, the more that we're out in the community, I think, and I hope that the community wants to, to, to help give back like you're, like you're asking. Absolutely. So this has been a really weird soccer season, right? I mean, I've never seen anything like this. So instead of asking you what's different this year, I'm gonna ask you, what is actually the same this year? So let's talk about COVID and soccer. Um, I think one of the biggest things that we've seen right out of the gates has been the experience. A, a lot of people are really grateful to have the kids playing again. I know the players are excited to be on the field again. As coaches, we're excited to be on the field again. You get that normal buzz at the beginning of every season. And this, I think, was heightened a little bit because we were indoors for so long. You know, we were doing the Zoom sessions. Everybody was in the front yard. Everybody was in the living room. They were in the garage on the video chat. And for us to actually get back outdoors again brought that 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 heightened sense of excitement. You know, that hey, we, we're we're grateful to be on the field. Not just excited, we're we're thankful. And we've seen that um, spread into the families. You know, the families have been very thankful and, and appreciative of what we did throughout the COVID months. And I think we were able to put something on the field again during the week and on the weekends. Yeah, I think, you know, the sheer joy. My, my, my two children play, and uh, they were, you know, like, like I'm sure most children right now, most kids right now, you know, a little bummed by so many things that have been taken away. And those first practices, I couldn't get my daughter to stop talking that evening. She was just beaming like I hadn't seen since early March. She, she was back. The 
just because of getting able to, to play again and, and see the, her friends that she hadn't seen since early March. And, uh, and that's been everywhere. Every, you know, the amount of parents who've been like, thank you, this is, this is what, what my son, this is what my daughter really needed, this is what they missed. Or they've never, they didn't play soccer and they got them into soccer because so many other things have been ripped away. Um, it's just provided this positive, because you know, it's physical exercise, it's, it's social, everything that the kids needed so badly. Absolutely. Where do you guys see this going next season? I think more of the same. Mm -hmm. I think uh, early on when it was looking in, in the summer, when it was looking like we were going to be able to have soccer, there was definitely a lot of uh, hesitation in families, and that has slowly um, melted away. Hopefully that continues. I think a lot of the precautions, safety precautions that are in place, regardless of what happens with COVID, are going are gonna to be in place for the spring season. Uh, our hope and what we're, we're seeing is that we're going to have more kids come back because numbers are down. People are are, are, are cautious and right, rightfully so. Um, but again, hopefully we're, those numbers will continue to increase and more kids will be able to come out and play in a safe manner. Yeah, we've seen a lot of good um, things from Colorado at the state and local levels. You know, Boulder County has been really diligent about the guidelines they've put in place for us um, because safety is their top concern and we've done everything we can to stay in line with everything they're asking. So we remain cautiously optimistic that there will be a spring season and that we'll be able to continue um, providing soccer um, next season. Yeah, we, get, we can only cross our fingers, right? Can't look into the future through the crystal ball. Right. But I do want to commend you guys on the hard work and the, and the, it must've been so taxing coming up with all of these things to get around having to meet in person, like the Zoom sessions that we had during the beginning parts of COVID. I, that was so helpful to those kids. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I, I think it was a new, a new normal, people were calling it. You know, we, we, we got into this routine. I know I, I got into a, a pretty fun schedule at the beginning just because it was new, just because it was uncharted territory. Um, and we did a lot of collaboration, you know, on our own, um, behind the scenes to, to, to make sure we could provide as much as possible, given the resources that we had. So, um, you know, hats off to our staff for the, the hard work that they put in during those months to prepare. You know, as soon as we figured out we were shut down, it wasn't like, okay, let's take a break. It was more, all right, let's, let's figure out what we're going to do to be able to provide the experience the, the soccer experience without being able to be there in person. You know, it, it kind of goes back to that personal touch now that we are on the field. I think it, it, it's savored by so, so many players and so many families to be out there again. Um, but, you know, to your point, we had to be creative. You know, we had to come up with moves. You know, the staff was helping. We had club coaches that were helping, giving us YouTube videos giving us things that they picked up i mean we went back into our repertoire and i remember doing things that i hadn't done since i was 12 years old you know so it was fun for me again as a player to start juggling the ball and and, and to be getting different touches with my feet and 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 reconnecting i guess to that young player inside of me again um and to be able to share that with the kids i thought was was fun i think after uh, a couple months though it did get a little bit old I mean, you know got a little bit it, it was tough to continue to reinvent ideas right or to continue to come up with new ideas to say okay what can we do next I've done this so many times so to keep it fresh for the kids I, I think was um, a bit of a task but again because our team does such a great job of collaborating it, it was really helpful to have other people giving us input you know from both the rec side the competitive side the staff coaches the club coaches um, it, it was a great effort all around Ton to learn that we've never done before. And you guys were quite agile on your feet, so good job on that. Thanks. No choice. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's do a fun question. Um, we've all played soccer our whole lives. What fundamental changes to the game would you guys want to see happen? If you guys could wave a magic wand and, and change something about the game. Huh. 
this season's a ball for me. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoy, I coach my, my, my kids uh, who are on the younger side, five and seven. As rec director, I, I have a lot of control over that. So I've kind of tweaked those rules to make sure that I think it's, it's what's best for the kids so that there's as minimal uh, parental control and it's the kids' game. They get to do it just a lot of play. So you know, I, I wouldn't change anything from the actual match itself. I think one of the things that I've noticed about this season and the guidelines that have been thrust upon us is we've had to limit the number of people at every facility. Uh, just to make sure that we're, we're adhering to COVID guidelines. And that's changed the environment tremendously. And I think for the better, um, though it's, a so, it's always a social event to come together and watch soccer, there's, there can also be an ugly underbelly in youth sports, uh, typically driven by overzealous parents. And I think that's been minimized a ton because of, like, at our older ages, for example, there's only allowed one spectator per, per player, so smaller crowds, there's not a lot of negative energy out there, which is sweet. Uh, I was actually talking to our referee coordinator earlier this week, and there, she was mentioning another facility that had zero ejections for the entire weekend, which is awesome. I mean, yeah. it's just people are on their on their best behavior, and I think what what this has done, um, not not necessarily us changing the game, but what what COVID has, has has forced soccer to be is keep everyone or give everyone a new perspective of what's really important. And it's about the kids really playing. You know, I think a lot of parents can make it about themselves. It becomes their form of entertainment. They're going to watch their kids. They're going to pour all their money into it to hopefully push their son or daughter onto this pathway. And, and right now, I think a lot of people are really looking at this as, this is awesome just to see my kid play and to see my kid really enjoy the game. Um, and that's COVID did that. And I, so that's a huge positive that's come out of this. I love it. Amen. I have had kids I've had kids parents ejected from games that I've coached. So I oh, wow. I know, yeah. And I if I've had emails sent regarding those types of things. So. It gets it gets intense. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully not too much. <laughs> so Tim, what about you? Uh you know, from the youth side, Colorado's done a great job. You know, when we moved to small sided um seventy seven and ninety nine a couple of years ago, I know as a staff we were delighted. It, it it's better for the game to have kids touching the ball more in a smaller space um, with more opportunity for, for repetition, for, for mistakes, for learning. Um, from the adult side, if we were to put it, I guess, put something out there, it probably would be promotion relegation in MLS. Uh, yeah. yeah we'd like to see that change and maybe look a little more similar to how the European system is set up so that there's consequences here. I love it. Maybe one day uh, it would be same for NFC and uh, MLS. It would be great. Yeah, that would be, be fantastic. And the Rapids would be in a lower tier. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding, Rapids. <laughs> Both of you. <laughs> Sorry. Cut. <laughs> so, um, Appreciate you both of you guys taking the time today. Uh, what ask do you have for our audience? How can we, as a audience, help St. Brain FC? You know, I think when we go back to the idea of community and what we've mentioned in terms of collaboration, one of the things we're really excited that, that, the, that the club can provide is, is soccer and, and sport during this time, I think, has been a positive in in a time right now that that provides so many negatives you know the climate right now there's so many there's so much opportunity to find something negative going on out there and, and soccer is a reminder that um, we can all come together you know soccer can bring bring together fellowship and, and bring people together regardless of your 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 culture your ethnicity your religious beliefs your um, political ideas, you know, we can put all of that aside and say, hey, we, we all want to share and be a part of the beautiful game and and um, celebrate it together. So so we've been excited that we can continue to provide that for the community and, you know, we'd ask the same thing from, from the community is let's, let's come together and, and share something, you know, beautiful. Tim, Josh, thank you guys so much for this today. Um, it's such an important topic, talking about kids and COVID and getting back onto the field. So it's, uh, it's great to have this conversation with you guys. Yeah.
Thanks for having us. Really appreciate it. Until next time, stay savvy.